Okay, I wanted to talk about current sources. Um, in a previous video, I did a series on op amps, and we saw this current source um, where you have a, a voltage here and you set up a voltage divider. So you have about one diode drop here and one diode drop here, and then uh, the, the base emitter has a diode drop. And so basically you have one diode drop across an R, okay? And this uh, would be a emitter follower. Whatever voltage you have here is reflected here minus the, the VBE. So it's about uh, uh, a diode drop lower, but you have this diode here. So anyway, the current in this situation, this current here going down through the transistor is going to be about 0.7 volts divided by R, okay? And so we saw that before. So what about uh, other, current, other current sources? Um, so I want to talk about one, which is, which is this one. I've used tons of these in the past. Uh, you use a, a three-terminal regulator, and uh, here we're using an LM317, and we're using it in a funny way. If you, if you go to the data sheets of these, you'll find this current source. Uh, but this is, the, uh, this is the in, okay, and this is the out, and then this is the adjust pin. And uh, the LM317 wants to see about 1.25 volts across 1 to 2. That's the way it regulates itself, 1.25 volts. So we're going to have about 1.25 volts across this resistor. And if you have an R in there, that's going to limit the current to 1.25 divided by R. All right? So let's try that out. I'm going to put a 220 ohm resistor in here. So we're going to have 1.25 divided by 220. And if we do the math, 1.25, 220, we're going to get about 5.68 milliamps. OK. Uh, so let's give that a try. Let's see if that, uh, if that works. I have, uh, I've built one right here. Okay, this is a uh, three-terminal regular with a 220 ohm resistor on it. So let's uh, let's get it hooked up here. So this is a uh, uh, let's see, you have 12 volts coming in. Doesn't matter. You have 12 volts coming in, and let's set up a current meter uh, measuring in milliamps, and let's connect the grounds together so they don't do anything. The grounds just going to go through. All right, so we're going to take this. And we're going to put the uh, current meter on the uh, pin one. Uh, you can do it. I don't want to show anything out here. There we go. And we get 578 milliamps. We were calculating 568. We got 578. So that's pretty darn close. And uh, this is pretty uh, intolerant of input voltage. Okay, it doesn't matter. I've got 12 volts going in. It doesn't matter if I change the change the voltage in. It doesn't matter because I'm always going to have 1.25 volts across that uh, across that resistor. So this is a great way to uh, to drive uh, to drive LEDs because these things are good up to oh in this mode um, maybe half an amp. Um, I think uh, you'll need a pretty stout resistor. Uh, make sure that the wattage is correctly when you do the calculation. You can't just use a little wimpy resistor. It's going to draw some current. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can set these up uh, for, you know, 100 milliamps, 300 milliamps, something like that. They're going to work just great. So, uh, and these, these regulators are just dirt, dirt cheap now, uh, LM317s. Okay, so uh, I really want to talk about another thing. Uh, I was on somebody else's channel, and they had built a... Uh, a little box, and it looked like they'd built a precision current source, and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe I want one of those for calibrating and stuff like that. So I, I took a look to see how the guy designed it, and uh, in some ways it was interesting, in some ways it was really, really boring. Um, so let me show you, let me show you what, I, what I found um, in that case. It is a 100-microamp uh, source, okay, and I thought it was going to be super high precision, but it really isn't. Um, it's going to use a chip, okay? So I thought, oh, a really fancy chip, right? It's a Burr, Burr Brown chip, so that must be that must be super fancy, okay? It is a get magfire out here. It's an REF two hundred. Now, usually when things start with REF, they're very very accurate, um, but this is an REF two hundred AP, and um, it's a very strange it's a very strange part. Uh, it has a couple current sources in it. So let's uh, let's take a look at the data sheet for this thing. 
All right, a Ref 200 dual current source and current sink. Uh, source and sink, that's kind of weird. So um, it says it's high accuracy. It's plus or minus 0.5%, so I guess that's pretty good. So if you need to have something laying around that's half a percent precision, 100, 100 microamps, uh, this is good. Wide voltage compliant. Yeah, two and a half volts to 40 volts. It doesn't matter what kind of volts you put into it. It'll, it'll, it'll source the same amount of current. So what's this thing look like? Here's the... Here's the package. Um, so from pin eight to pin one, it's a 100 microamp current source. So you just hook up something here and something here and, and you'll have 100, 100 microamps flowing and it, and it makes it at a constant rate. And oh, there's another one. So it's got two of them. So this one goes between pin seven and pin two. And then it's got a couple transistors over here. We'll talk about that later, but let's let's take a look at these two here, these two, uh, these two current sources. So uh, so I'm going to have it hooked up here, and let me let me get out my 12 volts here. I'm just going to operate on 12 volts, put the 12 volts in, and and I have a I have a uh, a diode here. So I have a, a plus V diode, and then current source. So and then ground. So it's just sending 100 microamps through the uh, through the LED, uh, and so there you go. Now, actually, I have it, I have got it tricked here. So let me let me pull this out. Okay, that's actually 100 microamps. Now remember that this. So this is going between pin eight and pin one. But remember, there's another one side by side that's pin seven to pin two. So if I short pins eight and seven together, then I have 200 microamps. I get 100 microamps in one of them and 100 microamps in the other one. And so 200 microamps is flowing through the LED. So I've got 200 microamps. So, so there you go. You could build a little box and put that in there and you could have a 100 microamp or 200 microamp, a current source available to you, you know, if you need it. And about, you know, half a percent, half a percent precision, that kind of thing. Now, what about those two transistors on the side? That's actually why I was thinking about making this video in the first place. Uh, these 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 two weird transistors over there are kind of they're kind of hooked up strange and so what are those things all about so let's take a look here uh, this is called a current mirror and so if you have a current already and you want to duplicate it you mirror it and it's in it and then you get an equal equal uh, magnitude current on the other side so so here we have a current flowing through this transistor and then if we have the same conditions, you'll have the same current flowing in this, trans in this transistor. And you need to add a little wire here. You need to turn this transistor on. And so remember, this is plus voltage. So that will turn on this transistor. And this transistor will start to flow. But you're, you're limiting the, the current here, right? You, if you send in one milliamp, then this transistor can only have one milliamp. And so the base emitter junction, that voltage is set to the condition where this transistor is very happy at one milliamp. And because this has the same base emitter uh, configuration, right, the, the, the base to emitter voltage here and the base to, base to emitter voltage here are both the same, then, then this transistor will also have one milliamp flowing in it. So whatever current you have flowing in here, you'll have it flowing in over here. And this is, this is called a current mirror. Okay, so let's try it out over in the uh, uh, over on the breadboard here. Okay, so let's see. So we have uh, we have uh, let's see here if I get another let me find another uh, another LED. Okay, so I have another LED here, and uh, what we're going to do is we are going to use their current mirror, okay? So I'm going to take, uh, let's see, I better draw it, I better draw it, everybody's going to get really, really confused here. Uh, let's see, I'll draw it on, I'll draw it on here. All right. So right now, we have these shorted together, okay? and these shorted together. And so we're gonna have 200 microamps flowing through these two. Now we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it in here, all right? And now 
that 200 microamps is going to flow through this transistor. Okay, we're going to put ground here. Okay, so we're going to have 200 microamps flowing, flowing through this transistor here, right? Which means, oops, I'm sorry, we shouldn't have shorted those out. This, this, one's, this one's ground, this one's the, the other side of the uh, transistor. So on pin four, it should sync 200 microamps. So if we put an LED over here, to plus 12, Okay, this is an LED. It'll be over here on this side of the mirror, and we should also get 200 microamps here. So we've made 200 microamps, we put that in the mirror, and we're reflecting it, and now we're getting 200 microamps over this side. So we need to put a, 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 a diode from pin four to 12 volts. So let's do that. So let's see here. So one, two, three, four. Uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, let's put the. Okay, and we need to hook that up to 12 volts, and there we go. We get our, our we get a mirror. So we have 200 microamps on this side. We also have 200 microamps on that side. So our current mirror works. Okay. So, so can you just use any old two transistors? Well, yes and no. So this thing really only works well if these two transistors are matched perfectly because the VBE drop needs to be exactly the same on both of them. Whatever condition this transistor is in, this one has to be in the exact same condition, which means it needs to be the exact same transistor. So you do have some problems. You need to make these the same. And then if this thing it gets warm and this thing doesn't get warm, then it'll, it'll get lopsided. So if you build these out of uh, single transistors, you have to match them make sure they, they're matched exactly the same, and then put them on the same heat sink so any temperature changes are about the same. So that's, what, that's why these little devices are really, really nice because this is monolithic. These two transistors are gonna be matched perfectly because they're, they're made in the same process. They're also on the same substrate, so they're matched thermally uh, perfectly as well. So these make really, really nice little current mirrors if you need them, okay? All right, so I wanted to show you one more trick which is pretty cool. So let's think, th let's think about this. Let's say that we set up, uh, we're going to use this circuit here, okay? And we're going to generate uh, a, certain, a certain current, all right? And we're going to bring that current around and we're going to put it into, we're going to put it into here, okay? So now we've made a certain current. Let's say we make uh, 100 milliamps, okay? 100 milliamps. So what does it take to make 100 milliamps? Well, if we, if we wanted 100 milliamps, that's 0.1 amp, okay, then we need to take 1.25 volts and divide it by 0.1. We would need a 12 and a half ohm resistor. So if we put in a 12.5 a ohm resistor here, we would get 100 milliamps, all right? So now we have 100 milliamps and it's going through this one, all right? And now it's mirrored over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an LED here, right? We're going to put an LED here, and now this LED is shining nice and bright. But let's say we have more LEDs, and we want to have them current controlled as well. Well, we could build another one of these, okay? But here's the trick, all right? So what if we do this, okay? And this, we're going to come around here, and we're going to tie it here. To all, we're going to tie it there also, all right? And now we can have another LED here. Oh, well, what if we want another one? I'll just go over here and I'll tie it into here, right? Here's another one, right? So you can see, you can just put as many as you want in here. So, so these these are really really nice if you're like building some type of uh, uh, some type of something with LEDs. And each LED you want to have current controlled. You don't need to have a individual current source for each one. That might be expensive. But you can just have individual little transistors for each one and then have one extra transistor that does the current mirroring. And uh, yeah, that works really good. So we used to use these in the Wayback Days a lot. Uh -huh. And so you, just, you can just make as many of these as you want and have this, uh, have this current mirror here. All right. So we talked about uh, the current mirror over here that you'll see inside of op amps. We talked about another way to do it with three terminal regulators. We talked about a fancy little circuit uh to 
uh, do just 100 microamps. So I don't know if there's any other types of ICs that have different values of currents and stuff, but there are some specialized ones that have uh, have certain currents in them. And then we talked about the current uh, the current mirrors, and uh, yeah, hope that helps.